What is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of their women. I copy. Yeah, it's over. Brilliant work, Commander. You should have no trouble mopping up the, at the other platforms now that their defenses are down. Speaking of which, I wasn't finished. These platforms won't do us much good if we can't hold them. Majesty Metals taught us that, so we're going to need your battle mechs. <laughs> you're, wanna, you're going to want to reconsider that. <laughs> Why, your lance has already been target locked by our turrets. Now power down and surrender or we'll let you in we'll let you walk or try to fight and we'll tear you to shreds. Your call. Well there goes our goddamn payday. Hold tight, Commander. We're on our way. Incoming bandit <coughs> So what are we doing? Do we gotta fight their turrets, I guess? Destroy hostile forces, but where are they? Destroy hostile forces. Or is it these guys? Ah, right there. Good to go. Oh, and the turrets. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's let's get back out over here. So we do have to get all these turrets. This ain't gonna take much. These guys aren't gonna do much damage. <coughs> He missed me and shot his own fucking building. Dumbass. Alright, so let's just start shooting the fuck out of everybody. Oh, the turret generator. Yeah, let's just take that turret generator out. That sounds good to me. Then all the turrets die. turrets now we just got to kill these vehicles what can I do for you My propulsion cannon just blew the piss out of that thing. <coughs> that was awesome. Ready for orders. Roger that. Just destroy all their fucking buildings. <laughs> That's what you get for messing with me. You should have just gave me my money, bitches. You bitches. <laughs> I tore those houses up. <laughs> Didn't hit the tank, but I tore those houses apart. <laughs> he just drove into the building. <laughs> he just freaking drove right into the building. That's awesome. <clears throat> Full 
compliment on enemy. Vehicle trashed. Vehicle trashed. <clears throat> All the turrets. <laughs> yeah, that, uh... That thing makes a nice difference when you can take that turret out, right? Waiting on you, Commander. Where's the other... Oh, he's over here. Yeah. On my way! Special delivery! <laughs> Special delivery! I don't. <laughs> Navigator, stand by for extraction, Commander. Let's get the hell out of here. Oh, and Darius? I know, Meyer, I know. You want another team meet. Give the man a prize. Mission success. <clears throat> Successfully completed with no losses. No loss of Decker. 15 turns, priority mission, debrief. Well done, Commander. You made the best of a bad situation. Here's hoping we don't run into another job like that one. <coughs> Recapture their platforms, engage, and destroy enemy units, and survive. I got them all. No payout, though. That sucks. Reputation for the Mercenary Review Board. Your rating with the Mercenary Review Board indicates how trusted and effective your mercenary company is. A high MRB rating will earn you respect from fellow mercenaries and mech warriors for hire. <clears throat> We're rated at 15. Alright. <clears throat> I got 980k. Nice. Guaranteed coffin. No, you just got to be smart with him. He's light. I mean, you can't, you can't run straight into the <coughs> battle with a light mech. <coughs> That's not smart. Oh, it shows what you killed. Nice. Nice. That's awesome, man. I like that. 800, 800, 800. So everybody got 800 EXP. So we're all uninjured. That's good. <coughs> Recruit, defender, gunner, recruit. So can I... I'm guessing I don't fix anything here. This is just the uh, results, mission results, basically. Well, I didn't hover over him. Does it show it if you hover over him? Maybe it does, and I just didn't see it. Rent to own in orbit. You need to start finding us better clients, Darius. I mean it. We've been a slumming it on the ass end of the frontier for three years now. <laughs> I read that as we've been slumming it on the ass. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. And we are drowning in debt. <clears throat> I'm fully aware of our financial situation, Meyer. But I can't just conjure up new clients out of thin air. Sigurther, do me a solid and back me up on this. Is this why you all made me your commander, so I could break up fights and review financial reports? If we're really that hard up for cash, we need to stop talking and start doing something about it. Or no thanks, I didn't take command of this outfit to settle arguments. <coughs> Yang! Hey, you'll hear no arguments from me. When we made you our commander, we all agreed to follow your lead. Darius, you could walk us through the details of this trouble we're in. It might help if you broke things down point by point. Sure thing, Yang. Point one, Meyer's right. We're in debt. Every sea bill we make technically belongs to the banks. Sea bills is a standard galactic unit of currency named for Comstar. One sea bill is valued at one millisecond of HPG transmission time. <coughs> Point two, this corner of the frontier is a dead zone for mercenary work. There are clients, but they're terrible. That's just a fact. And that's it. 
there are no other points. Truthfully, I can't even say we're in a pretty deep hole. And from where I'm standing, I don't see a whole lot of daylight. The thing is, these banks, and I use that word loosely, they don't want us to pay off our loans. They'll do whatever they can. They'll do whatever they can get away with to keep us on the hook. Hit us with fees, jack up our interest rates, misfile our paperwork. I'm trying to find us a way out of this, but it's going to take time. And every day that passes, we accumulate more debt. If we keep going like we have been, we're screwed. <coughs> All right, it wants us to ask this, so we will. That wouldn't be a very good idea. The banks wouldn't come for us themselves. They'd hire mercenaries, and you already know how hard up frontier mercs are for work. If we stiff the banks, we'll wind up dead or in debtor's prison. And out here in the frontier, those are basically the same thing. <clears throat> I don't see what else we can do. I'm already serving up every legitimate contract I can find. Unless you want me to sidestep the Mercenary Review Board entirely, we're basically out of options. Founded in 2789, the Mercenary Review Board serves as an impartial broker of mercenary contracts. The MRB is overseen by Comstar, a communications giant that is famous for its neutrality. An essential component of modern military culture, the MRB ensures an even playing field between mercenary companies and their employees, and it is quick to arbitrate any breach of contract. <coughs> Go around the MRB? No thanks. Taking on uncertified job is a great taking an uncertified job is a great way to wind up with a knife in your back. Yeah, no shit. We just got betrayed by a board certified contracting. How much worse could it get? Plenty. What happened down there was an exception, boss. With uncertified jobs, it's the rule. Remind me again why we don't just skip town and head to a nicer corner of the periphery. Because the banks and the jump ship crews have an ar arrangement. Until we pay up, they're going to keep us with on a short leash. <coughs> That's a good reason. Look, Darius Meyer's right. We need to start earning some real money, and we need to do it soon. It's only a matter of time before something breaks down, and I can't fix it with du duct tape anymore. Or duct tape and good intentions. I don't know where I got any more from. <coughs> yeah, boss, much as I hate to say it, I agree with you. We need to sidestep the MRB. Guess I'd better get mentally prepared for that knife in the back, huh? It's settled then. I'll start digging for contracts outside of the MRB system. Who knows? Maybe it'll work out for the best. It isn't like we've got all that much to lose. <coughs> in the meantime, we get we need to find another paying job, and our prospects in this system have completely dried up. I'd recommend booking travel to a neighboring system and seeing what the review board has for us. With any luck, we'll find enough work to keep going until something better rolls in. The banks are holding our jump ship access hostage until we repay our debts. For now, we can only go between... Arcruni and the nearby systems of Alloway, Bellaropan, and Detroit. Hey, we can go to Detroit. Our top priority right now needs to be finding work so we can raise cash. None of the contracts here are very good. I picked out the only viable one I could find, and it help, hopefully includes our travel fees as part of the deal. Come by the command center when you're ready to review it. <coughs> okay, so we're going to be in our jump ship. Timeline is paused. Nice. So we get to see our jump ship for the first time. Finances are normal. This is 29 point. We got 240 per month. The pips indicate the number of months you can stay afloat. <coughs> Should your funds ever hit zero, your company will fail entirely and cease operations. <laughs> Morale's good. <coughs> Tech points are generated each day and spent to repair or customize battle mechs. Tech points only apply to one mech task at a time. So additional tasks are queued to be worked on. Nice. Medical points are generated each day and spent to heal injured mech warriors. <coughs> they apply to all injured mech warriors simultaneously. Financial report.
that's where we're at now hiring hall store orbit transit jump shit <coughs> so we can buy salvage huh oh shit we gotta buy ammo I mean it makes sense right <coughs> What can I sell? Not much. <coughs> oh, these are contracts. Oh no, this is hiring people. Yeah, okay. So that's to get other pilots. Huh. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Look at all these little mechs. <coughs> <coughs> all the little mechs down here. <coughs> Operating costs. Bank loan interest payment, 70K. <clears throat> That's interesting. So we have to keep track of our finances. That's pretty cool. I like that. <clears throat> Um, how does the decision we made about uncertified contracts I show you? I've got some questions about it. I'm collecting stories about the crew. Tell me something about you. <coughs> well, I'm from a noble family like you, where old money made our fortune out in the Rossahog, then uh, repatriated to the Torian Concordant. That's where I grew up. I'm not sure if this is the kind of stuff where you were hoping to hear, but we can talk about whatever. I'm not shy. Oh, you're not shy, huh? Well, since you mentioned that... <laughs> the Torian Naval Institute on New Vandenberg. Well, among other places, it's a big campus. The Low Gravity Training Station orbiting... Lompoc was my second home for a time. TNI flight training isn't usually open to civilians, but my parents had good credit back then, and they could name drop uh, Protector Cal Calderon. That'll get you pretty far on the Concordant for a while anyway. <coughs> the other cadets in my class were especially happy sharing air with a civvy, but they w couldn't say much. I was nobility, and they weren't. Everyone sort of kept me at arm's length, so I had plenty of time to concentrate on my studies. <clears throat> uh, that's normally how you do it, Voltron, but they're, it's broke right now. Until they get a fix up on uh, Ankbot, none of the commands work. So unfortunately, you won't be able to see it. Uh, I grew up on New Vandenberg. It's a nice enough place, I suppose. Do you like birds? <laughs> 
Uh, why do you ask? Because New Vandenberg is crawling with them. It's basically one big aviary. Something like two-thirds of the native fauna has feathers. Flutters on the wind and splatters its ex excrement over across every available surface. You sure? Because I could keep going. I hate birds, is what I'm saying. That may be an unpopular opinion for a pilot, but I'll stand by it until the day I die. All right, so what can you tell me about House Meyer? <coughs> You're looking at it. My parents are both gone, blood cancer and heart disease, respectively. Both treatable, but they were out of money at that point, so into the ground they went. Ditto my brother David, who ran off to serve in the Third Succession War and never came back. It is what it is. To be perfectly honest, I was never really all that close to any of them. David was 13 years older than me and had a foot out the door before I turned three. And my parents, well, <clears throat> they raised me by proxy in the traditional noble fashion. There was no real bond there, even when I was young. None of this is to say that my folks were bad people. They weren't. They, they were just doing what they knew. Their upbringings had been outsourced, just like mine was. <clears throat> It was a long time ago, but yeah, as my parents told it, we were landowners on Palme de Terre. It's an agricultural world, sort of the breadbasket of the Draconis Combine. And yes, I know the Palme de Terre means potato. <laughs> Palme de Terre is potato. My ancestors came from the, pla from the planet Potato. It took some time for me to accept that, but hey, here we are. <laughs> anyway, moving on. House Myers Holdings were meeker, but the value of that kind, or that land, was astronomical for minor minor nobility we were really very wealthy and then the third succession war broke out and the political rhetoric got ugly house meyer didn't want a single part of what was happening so my ancestors emptied their accounts and ran <coughs> all right so i think we're done talking to her be my guest what do you need <coughs> no shit that was all just the one Eesh. all right we got a lot more to read Sure, ask away. I mean, it's kind of important that you understand what you're doing, so if I can help with that, I'm all for it. All right, um, tutorial, ship navigation. Okay, oh. the short answer is that you pick a destination on the star map and I make it happen. Uh, interstellar travel takes time, sometimes weeks, and it'll cost us sea bills for fuel and passage on a jump ship, but it's the only way for an outfit like ours to survive out here. We go where the work is. <coughs> What intel can I get about a system before choosing to go there? Enough to make a reasonably informed choice. I think the star map makes political boundaries clear, so you know whose space we're entering. I pre-programmed the star map to lock out travel to systems designated as no-fly zones. We're looking for work, not an interstellar incident. Beyond political boundaries, the nav system will highlight political factions active in the system. That should give you a good idea of who's hiring. It's probably a good idea to check our reputation with the local factions before ordering a long voyage. There's got to be more intel than just the local politics. <coughs> there is. As you select systems on the star map, you'll see a list of the attributes the MercNet database associates with them. Attributes like black market or poor are clues to local store contents. The type of mercs we'll find in hiring halls, contracts we may be offered, and potential mission environments. If you hover over an attribute, the star map will display the longer description for you. <coughs> what else can you tell me about the mercen or mechanics of space travel? I want to know it all. <coughs> 
Well, the long answer is that there's two types of space travel. Travel by drop ships like ours and travel by jump ships. Drop ships travel under 1G of thrust to move from a planet's orbit to a jump point. Jump points are for outside the gravity well of the star, and so travel to and from jump points takes most of our travel time, sometimes weeks. Jump ships, on the other hand, are like ferries. They just sit at a jump point waiting for folks like us to latch onto their docking collar. Then we wait there for about five days while they spin up their jump drive. Once the jump drive is spun up, popping a dozen light years across interstellar space to another jump point takes nearly no time at all. I've heard stories about pirate points that a jump point ship can use, or jump ship can use. What are those? <coughs> They're bad news, Commander. Difficult to locate and dangerous to use. I've heard of people using pirate points in desperate situations or on covert missions, but it's not worth the risk of a missed jump. You won't find any pirate points on my star map, I can tell you that. Let's just avoid them. <coughs> Do we always have to pay for our, our way from system to system? Not always, no. If you check the contracts list in the command center, you'll often find employees posting travel contracts. Travel contracts are how employees attract mercenaries to their system by paying the outfit's travel expenses. Now, I know what you're thinking. <coughs> Why not take the travel contract and then skip out on their mission for a more lucrative contract when we arrive? You can do that, but we'll automatically get charged the cost of the jump. You know that old saying, there's no such thing as a free ride. Yeah, unfortunately, it's still true. Free ride. Oh. <coughs> Alright, so that one's done. Tutorial star map. The star map confuses me sometimes. Why does it take longer to get to one place than to another when the systems appear to be the same distance apart? Yeah, that bothered me too before I joined the Academy. Turns out that in real life, space travel isn't like what you see in the adventure holovids that Darius makes us watch. For starters, some stars are more massive than others. In the case of a really big star, <coughs> you have to range pretty far afield to find a location suitable for a KF jump. And for us, that means a whole lot of molasses, slow, sublight travel before we could even dock with a jump ship, let alone ride it anywhere. <coughs> Jump ship charging times are the other half of the travel equation. A jump ship's KF drive will take a few days to recharge after each jump. So if your destination is a few jumps away, well, you get where I'm going with this. And that's the long and short of it. Anytime we want to go from one system to another, we're talking about weeks of sublight travel. Coupled with a healthy dose of hurry up and wait. Exactly how much determines how long this trip is going to take. <coughs> Stores and the hiring staff. What can I do while orbiting in system? <coughs> Beyond negotiating contract, most inhabited systems maintaining a hiring hall where we can recruit new mech warriors. Be sure to take a look. You never know what kind of talent you're going to find. Most systems also have merchants who can buy and sell hardware such as weapons, opponent or equipment, and mech parts. Sometimes even fully operational battle mechs too. <coughs> All right, so that's everything from her. Oh, that's everything from her on that one. Uh, my concerns won't be satisfied until our creditors have been paid and the loan sharks are off our backs. But this is a ship in the right direction, and that makes me happy. I'm not blind to the risks that uncertified contracts entail, by the way. I mean... I know that what we're doing is dangerous, but it's the last best chance we've got to dig ourselves out of this hole. Commander. All right, so she's done. <coughs> now we can look at the star map. <coughs> nice, so we can only go in here right now. I can't zoom any further out than that. Oh, there we go. So the WASD doesn't move it. That sucks. <coughs> hmm. Leopard. Alloway. Detroit. We got a travel contract here. Nice, it's even got uh, attributes for the planet and stuff. That's awesome. <coughs> Alright, let's...
let's go ahead and get out of here. Mech Bay. Nice to see you down here in the <clears throat> now we get to talk to him for a long time. Hey, you boss. Welcome to the Mech Bay, my own little piece of heaven right here on the ship. Something I can help you with. I want an assessment on the Leopard. How much trouble are we in? Do know, I mean, we're doing okay for the moment, but give it a few months, maybe a year. You know how it goes. Eventually everything falls apart. <clears throat> I got a few questions about the Mech Bay. Yeah, then hit me with them. I'll do what I can to answer. I mean, I don't want to wax poetic or nothing, but the Mech Bay is where the magic happens. Boss, it's the beating heart of a mercenary outfit. Tutorial Mech Bay. Anything I should know about the Mech Bays themselves? <coughs> Beyond each cubicle holding one battle mech, not much. It's all about capacity. The more Mech Bays we have, the more mechs we can keep battle ready, and the more mechs we have battle ready, the more flexibility you have in your deployment options. That's right. Mech Storage. A few reasons. First, we have limited capacity in the mech bay, so we need to store the overstock for eventual sale or for use in the future. Second, we don't pay upkeep costs on mechs and storage. That's a business thing, though not my department. Third, and this is important, whenever we pick up partial mech salvage from the battlefield, I put it in storage for you. If we gather or buy enough partial mech salvage to complete a battle mech chassis, my team will assemble it right away. You let me know if you want to keep it in storage or have it ready to... for combat. Battle mechs are expensive as hell, so assembling one out of savage is our best bet for expanding our roster. What happens when a mech goes into or gets readied from storage? <coughs> when you send a mech chassis into storage, our mech techs dismount all its weapons and equipment and place them in your inventory for use on other chassis. A chassis can stay in storage indefinitely, and don't worry about storage capacity, boss. I'll make it fit. Don't you worry. I bet you will. Man, a lot of shit to read here. Mech components. I've been wondering about the components you can put on our mechs. <coughs> One of my favorite topics. In the mech bay, you can browse all the equipment we have available in inventory. There are two types of components I can install on a battle mech, weapons and equipment. Nope. I mean, I pretty much know all this, but... Ballistic weapons such as the auto cannon pack a good punch, generate little heat, and can destabilize an enemy if they hit it enough. But ballistic weapons are, you know, ballistic. <clears throat> so they require ammo. And ammo can explode if it takes a hit in combat, which is bad news all around. Ballistic weapons are also pretty heavy and can take up a lot of space on a mech. Strengths... Strengths and weaknesses, boss. Strengths and weaknesses. Energy weapons like the propulsion cannon don't use any ammo, but they generate a lot of heat. You may need to invest in additional heat sinks to keep your mech if you choose to. an energy heavy loadout. <coughs> Missile weapons are my favorites. Yeah, they require ammo and generate moderate heat, but the pounding they deliver can destabilize an enemy faster than most other weapons. And having multiple projectiles in a shot means you're almost always guaranteed at least a single hit. <coughs> Long-range missiles are also capable of indirect fire. If you one of your units has line of sight on an enemy, it can act as a spotter for the LRM equipment units that don't. With a spotter, a make equipped fell LRMs can stay behind cover and arc its missiles to hit the enemy. A spotter can increase your line launcher's effective range too granted the enemy can do the same to you but that's someone else's problem <coughs> support weapons are lighter than the others small lasers machine guns that kind of thing i programmed our targeting computers to automatically fire them after a melee attack if they're activated tell me about the other types of equipment you'll refit on the mech <coughs> It's a big list, boss. I suggest you check the store in every system we travel to. You never know what you'll find. I can install stronger cockpits to reduce the injuries our mech warriors will take, arm actuators that increase melee damage, range finders that increase the range at which enemies can be visually acquired, all sorts of stuff. All take up critical slots on a battle mech. Some add weight, too. Keep your eyes open for them. And 
give them a good once over before you buy so you know what you're getting into. Now, putting powerful weapons and equipment on your mechs is fine and all, but remember, the trade-off is always armor. You know how they say the best defense is a strong offense. <coughs> I heard that some manufacturers had developed better versions of some weapons. True that. Different manufacturers tweak their weapons to deliver more damage, have higher accuracy, destabilize the enemy, a bunch of stuff. The trick is finding them. They're rare out here in the periphery, so I so when I see one in a store or a salvage pile, I'll always mark it with a plus for you, so you can identify it easily. Let's hit on that. And we still got a lot to read here. Four more? No, three more. <coughs> Repairing damage. How do I repair mech damage after a battle? Whenever you return from a mission, stop by the mech bay here to tell me which mechs you want to have repaired. I'm not going to assume anything. You run this alpha, so you tell me which one to spend the money and time on. Okay, that's not completely true. If I see armor missing from a battle mech, I'm going to repair it automatically. It's standard operating procedure, and... We have so much scrap armor lying around that you should consider armor repairs to be free. Now, if you tell me to repair a mech containing destroyed equipment, the techs will strip that off automatically, too. I'll list the equipment they strip, and you're going to want to replace it with something. <coughs> All right. So that's what we need to do is get them repairing mechs. All right. Before I go any further, I'm going to take a quick break and grab a bathroom break and get me something to snack on or eat real quick. So give me about five minutes, guys. I'll be right back. Plus, I just need to get up and walk around for a second. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> we are back. With food. <coughs> so, you guys will have to uh, bear with me here while I eat as we continue to play through this and read through all this stuff. <clears throat> you guys do not want to be here right now. Well, you might want to be here to, with what I'm eating, but you wouldn't want to be here after I get done eating what I'm eating. I got me a nice big bowl of chili. The wife is going to be happy that I'm staying downstairs all night. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> hey, story. Uh, good. No, I have not killed anybody on a death from above yet. But I also have not lost anybody to death yet, so... That's also a very good. Put me in mech, coach. <laughs> <coughs> no, you'd find a way to kill yourself. You're not going in a mech. I wonder if I can rename my mercenaries. That's actually... That's a good point there. Uh, that brings up a good thought there, Story. That'd be pretty cool if I can rename them. Giveaway for names of the mech warriors. drill sounds. <laughs> All right. 
Anyway, <clears throat> like I was saying, armor repairs are free. Internal structure, on the other hand, takes time and sea bills to fix. If a mech structure is damaged or missing, I'll flag it for you in orange. Just order the repair, confirm the time and cost, and I'll get it on our work queue. So changing loadouts. What if I want to change a mech's loadout? Can I refit it with new weapons and equipment? <clears throat> Um, for me it is. It's more than worth it because I know the universe. I've played in it, you know, for many years back in the day and I love the game. So, for me it's absolutely worth it. If you're not a fan of the system or, or the universe and or you've never played in it and you don't know much about it, if you're not a fan of it and you don't like it, then no, it's not worth it. If you don't know anything about it and you've only seen what you're reading on reviews and what you're watching on videos like this, then it's really just based on if you feel like it's something you think you'd be interested in. If you think you would like it and have fun with it, like a turn-based uh, <clears throat> um, system and game, and you like mechs and having, uh, you know, fights and battles with huge, heavy robots, then give it a try. Ooh, now you're talking, boss. You bet you can refit a mech. You can repair it at the same time, too. Just select the battle mech and order the refit. That'll bring it to the mech lab. What can I do in the mech lab? <clears throat> Mech Lab is where you let me know what sorts of modifications you want to make to our stable of battle mechs. I can install new weapons and equipment, add or remove armor location by location, pretty much anything you want. All it takes is time and money. We've got plenty of both, right? Are there limits on how I can refit a mech? Yes, there are. It's hardware. Of course there are limits. Your biggest constraints are the chassis weight and its hard points. Negative. A mech's chassis can support only so much tonnage in weapon, armor, and equipment, so you need to keep its overall weight in mind when designing a battle max loadout. <clears throat> if your design is over a chassis weight rating, we can't accept the work order. Now, there are ways of making things fit, of course. <laughs> What's a hard point again? Each location on a battle mech contains one or more weapon mounts called hard points. Hard points are only designed for one specific weapon type, ballistic, energy, missile, and support. <coughs> However, most mechs contain locations with more than one hard point. So you have some flexibility in what you mount there. Let's go back for a minute. There's something else I need to ask. <coughs> <coughs> How do I know what a mech is good at in the first place? <laughs> it's good at going and killing shit. Blowing shit up. That's what it's good at. Great question. There are a lot of different battle mechs out there and it's hard to know what they were built to do best just by looking at them. I mean, I can, of course, but I'm me. You, on the other hand, are going to need some help. Thankfully, I'm a helpful guy. If you check your technical readouts in the mech lab, you'll find that I've included some thoughts about each mech's off-the-rack purpose or stock role. They're only opinions, mind you, but you might find them useful. <coughs> what happens if I order a refit? Once you confirm your work order, it'll be placed in a queue with other repairs and refits on your timeline. Remember, a mech will be unavailable for combat until its work order is complete, so plan your refits carefully. I suggest queuing them up before we head to the next system to use our travel time efficiently. If you want to change a mech's placement in the work queue, select Manage Tasks under the timeline to reprioritize or cancel work orders. Depends on the mech bay conditions you're working in. 
a good mech bay with advanced scaffolding and equipment is faster than one you'll find on a standard leopard. <coughs> Alright, so we're done with that section. Tutorial on heat stability and modifiers. You seem to know your way around a battlefield, Yang. Any advice? <coughs> Does your background that you choose at the beginning affect the mech that you start with? I have no idea, S Hunter. I would expect not. <coughs> ah, this is part of the action, Anarian. This is the... <coughs> if you've played XCOM, this is the in-your-base part of the action of XCOM, is outfitting your warriors and, and uh, getting all your weapons and your research and all that kind of good stuff. It's the first time I've ever been in this section, so I gotta figure out where everything is and learn where everything is and what it is. And plus, it makes for good entertainment for the uh, <coughs> for the stream and the recording for people to watch in the past or, or later on. I mean, so sure, the better you lead in combat, the less work I have to do when it's over. So let's talk about heat. Pretty much what we already knew. You can't. Overheat. Using jump jets, firing weapons generates heat. We already know all that. How can I affect heat in combat? <coughs> Each weapon can be toggled on and off. We already know all that. Most mech workers keep their heat low by toggling them off. Yes, we know that. Sometimes you have a solid chance to hit with everything in your arsenal. That's when you got to experiment by toggling <coughs> to see how you get below the red line. We already did all that. How can you make a mech more heat efficient with heat sinks? Uh, note your mech's <coughs> heat rating in the mech lab and install more heat sinks on it if you find that it runs hot in combat. Heat sinks vent plasma from the weapons or mech's engine and do a lot of di to dissipate the buildup from jump jets and weapons fire. Heat sinks are your friend. <coughs> you can always change the weapons on the mech to use more heat friendly parts but obviously that'll change how you use the mech in combat trade-offs boss it's all about trade-offs <coughs> alright so we know about heat we learned that stability we already know about it's basically getting knocked over and falling over <coughs> it's a good way for it to become destabilized walking over rough terrain doesn't help much either Destabilized mechs can't sprint in combat, and they're vulnerable to falling if hit hard enough while in that state. How do you make battle mechs less vulnerable to weapon fire? <laughs> Stay out of range of getting hit by weapons. <laughs> That's how. <laughs> or kill the mech before they can fire on you. I mean, this is all pretty self-explanatory, but we'll go over this real quick. Short form version is this. The farther a unit goes, the more evasive it becomes. Shooting a moving target is hard. Shooting a faster target is harder. <coughs> when you order a mech to move in combat, note the number of angled chevrons your command software assigns to it. The more chevrons that are displayed, the harder it'll be to hit. Same for the enemy. So cover. <coughs> yep. They're big and scary and dangerous, and they're harder to hit standing in forests and other terrain features. Standing behind buildings or hills is good, too. If the enemy can't see you, they're going to have a hard time hitting you. It's all about line of sight. Mastiff taught me to brace my mech, but that doesn't make it harder to hit. <coughs> no, bracing your mech won't make it harder to hit, but it should buffer some of the damage you'll take by half or so. Think So think about it, eh? Alright, so we're done with that section. That's everything. So we're done talking to him. Oh, no we're not. Let's find out it's past. <coughs> And that's a long story, boss. Shortest version I can give you. I signed on after I served my term in the Third Succession War, uh, fighting for the Capellan Confederation. 
If you want to know more, you can ask whenever you want. Otherwise, let's get back to talking shop. <coughs> Bryant in the Confederation, you may have heard of our claim to fame, the Crowley Lizard Cow. <laughs> no, well, trust me, they're delicious. <laughs> All right, what's this? An edible reptile indigenous to the planet Bryant. The meat of the Crowley Lizard Cow is considered a delicacy, and it is one of Bryant's few planetary exports. Anyways, as the story goes, Bryant was a really <coughs> nice place once, a tourist spot, big with hikers and fishing enthusiasts, pale blue skies, emerald green seas, and a booming agricultural business. You know the works. I never knew it that way, though. Stefan Amaris got to it a couple of centuries before I was born, and, well, that was that. So what's the deal with the Stefan Amaris? <coughs> Born in 2717, died, blah, blah, blah. As president of the Rim World's Republic, Stefan Amherst expanded the Republican army and placed Republican agents in key positions throughout the Star Leagues. He fostered a close relationship with Richard Cameron while the First Lord was in his minority. When Cameron came of age, Amherst guided him towards policies that removed Alexander Kerensky's SLDF away from Terra and place <coughs> Republican forces there instead. With these preparations in place, Stefan Amherst murdered Richard Cameron <laughs> and declared himself First Lord, beginning the Amherst Civil War. Kerensky raised the Rimworld's Republic and returned to Terra to defeat Amherst's forces and captured him. Stefan Amherst was executed by firing squad. His remains were donated to the medical school of the University of New Samarkand. <coughs> As the story goes, Bryant used to have these enormous orbital mirrors, storm inhibitors, they called them. The Star League put them in place. When Amherst took the system in a civil war, he had his troops use them for target practice. <laughs> Without those mirrors, Bryant reverted to its natural state, a miserable little ball of wind-blown dirt, actively hostile to human life. By the time I came along, the only places where people could live in relative safety were the planet's poles. Of course, you can't fit a pla planet's entire population into a handful of cities at its poles. There just isn't enough space, no matter how far down you dig or how tall you build. A lot of people, mostly the poor, died in the early days. There's still a lot of overcrowding in Bryant's cities even now. <coughs> uh, we'll get into a battle here in a little bit, Anarian. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, Swerve. I'm still reading through all the uh, the text history, basically. Like, add more med bays and stuff. Oh, the actual ship, not your mechs. No, I haven't. I haven't looked at that yet. <coughs> I'm just going through all of these real quick. The second St. Ives Lancers, 1st Battalion under Major Ling. We saw more action than most. The arm is a souvenir of my time in the service. I lost the original back in 3010 on St. Lawrence. You know, when we first arrived at St. Louis, I loved the place. It was an agricultural world, sort of a breadbasket for the neighboring systems. Uh, <coughs> green fields, rolling hills, you get the picture. We just walked out of hell on Kittery. The Fed rats drove us out in 05 with our tails between our legs, so it looked like paradise to us. I remember kicking back in the mech bay, my feet propped up on an engine box, sipping on a snifter of anger grist vermouth not a bad way to spend a sunny afternoon anyway turned out the federated sons weren't done with us yet we were barely a month into our deployment when they sent the steady hussars hus hus to burn us out I'm sure that there were sound strategic reasons for House Davian to want St. Louis, but it sure felt personal to me. <coughs> Long story short, one of their scouts managed to slip through our perimeter and hit my mech bay. I was tinkering around in a Centurion's custom-made rumble seat at the time. Being surrounded by all that armor is the only reason I made it out alive. What is a rumble seat? An optional secondary passenger seat that can be built into the control area of a battle mech. Rumble seats are positioned away from all control systems and ejection equipment. Those who ride in them have no control over the mech itself and are utterly at the mercy of the mech warrior in the cockpit. Interesting. Still, I didn't make it out unscathed. I lost two of my favorite assistants and my own right arm. So I've got this ugly thing grafted onto me as a reminder.
Why did you leave the Capellan Fellow Confederation? After my tour of duty was up, you mean? I don't know. It was just time for a change. Besides, the place wasn't for me anymore. In a way, it never really was. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I'm a completionist, so I like to read all the, the fluff and get my full value out of the you know a campaign mode like this. So I like to try to do everything and get everything and read everything. I learned a lot from my time in the service. Got a first-hand view of the elitist bullshit that <clears throat> saturates Capellan culture. How it rewards highborn idiots at the common people's expense. Speaking as a thoroughly common man, that didn't sit right with me. When my tour was over, I walked away and never looked back. You'll never really get away from the aristocracy. Yang, hell, I was born a noble. <clears throat> yeah, you're, but you're very competent, noble. And you aren't afraid to get your hands dirty. At the end of the day, that's all I really care about. I wonder how many times I watched talented engineers get passed over for promotion so some idiot with a title could advance. Too many to count. Oh, shit. Okay, for what it's worth, I'm glad that you walked away. You've brought my mech back from the brink more than once. Hey, way more than once, if memory serves. <clears throat> Still, I appreciate the kind words, and for what it's worth, I'm happy to be here with this crew. Going career military would have been an enormous mistake. In your position, I probably would have done the same. Let's talk about something else. I think that's it with him. Yep. Talk to you later. All right, so. Lo, there do I see my father. Lo, there do I see my mother and my sisters and my brothers. Lo, there do I see the line of my, my people. Mother. Back to the beginning. No. They do call to me. They bid me take my place among them. In the halls of Valhalla, 